What scam is so normalized that people don't even notice? Service fees are just an artificial way to pretend prices are lower than they really are. That's only $15. Plus $10 in service fees, just say it's $25. Unrelated but I hate companies, e.g. my utility company, that charge you a premium to pay online. I find it very hard to believe it's cheaper for them to process me mailing them a check, but I'm over here doing it because it costs me 60 cents instead of $3. So many scams in dentistry. I've been in the industry for 12 years and it's amazing how common it is. So easy to tell someone they need a bunch of treatment they don't really need. Years back my dentist told me I might have a cavity in between the cusps of one of my molars, but he couldn't tell for sure. He asked me to come back in a few days and he would drill into it to check. If it was a cavity, he'd fill it. If it wasn't, well, he'd fill the tooth anyway because he just drilled a hole into it. Decided to go to another practice. New dentist carefully examined it, gave me a free dental x-ray just to confirm, and said, yeah that's a stain. Getting students, interns to work for free while treating them poorly. Rent to own coming from someone who worked for rent a center for three and a half years. I worked for RTO rents for about a year in California. Our only customers were people who had no chance at buying a TV, VCR, stereo, or appliance outright or even on credit. We provide a service for underprivileged clients. No, you prey on unfortunate victims who have no other recourse but come to you and pay 300% of the actual value. Couldn't stomach it and got out extra fees on travel or actually any e-commerce purchase convenience fees or whatever you name them ticketmaster is an evil monopoly that sucks the life out of my concert going experience i will never get over it unpaid overtime any work you can't complete in your paid hours should be done by an extra employee the company pays for by doing unpaid overtime you are paying for the cost of your time and donating that to your employer if a company can't afford to pay its employees for all their time working and still remain profitable they are not a viable business and need to restructure their processes and or pricing. If they can afford to pay it but choose not to they are stealing from you. Branded diets. No company that you pay to help you diet is invested in your success. They make money when you fail and keep returning. They're all a scam. You're more likely to end up with an eating disorder than permanent weight loss. The Shirky Principle. Institutions will try to preserve the problem to which they are the solution. Dealerships. I don't underhand how two people could buy the same exact product, trim, style, features and pay 2 to 10k difference. Edit. To everyone saying there is no supply, because of shortages. Then sell if for full price MSRP. Isn't that what it is for? Don't give discounts and don't give out incentives. What problem do dealership sales employees solve to justify getting paid so much? Perfect typo. Funeral industry. When my mother died, my father bought the cheapest casket available on principle, my mother would have agreed. We got some strange looks at the funeral when everyone saw the obviously inexpensive casket. Unfortunately a lot of people still equate the cost, quality of the casket with how much the person was loved or valued. Congressmen can use insider trading legally. Extended warranties on anything you could easily afford to replace. A website just offered me extended warranty on a 10 euros smartphone asterisk case asterisk. Cups with so much ice that you only get 4 ounces of a drink in a 20 ounces cup. Black Friday. Amazon is the worst about this. Whenever they advertise what discount you're getting for an item it's always from the MSRP. For example, a product could be $100 that they sell for $80 throughout the year but on Prime Day or Black Friday they'll list it at $70 and claim a 30% discount. When in doubt with Amazon, check camelcamelcamel.com for the history of a product's price. Printer ink being overpriced. Printer ink being required to use the scan function. The fact existing customers aren't automatically moved to better deals once their contract ends. They hope you won't switch and pay the premium. This is why I left my first apartment complex after a year. They wanted to raise my rent $120 a month. When I told them I would not be renewing they listed my apartment for the same monthly rate I had been paying all along. That people 65 and up are considered unemployable in the workplace due to mental decline, but they run the country. 
As a newly unemployed 57-year-old woman, this jobs I'm fully qualified for won't even look at me. I'm simultaneously considered overqualified, computer user since 1985, and underqualified, I'm over 50. I must be completely clueless about technology. Seriously considering becoming a truck driver. Sigh. Outlet malls. There was a great Adam ruins everything on him about how you are not actually getting marked down high-end products, just special cheaply made products created by brands for outlet malls. They used to be awesome. Outlet malls had factory seconds and leftover products. Now they're pure crap. The fact that someone cut a chicken wing in half and managed to convince everyone it was two wings. Technically into thirds, and you don't even get that other third. I imagine some people out there like to at least gnaw on that or something. That news stations can lie to you as long as they classify it as entertainment. Your Honor, obviously no one could or should take my client seriously with the incredible holy fictional nonsense he spouts, so we plead not guilty. Case dismissed. Fast fashion. The reason why your clothes don't look good after you start wearing them is because they were meant to break, fade after the first wash. So you can keep buying more and more. H&M's quality has plummeted but you can make fast fashion clothes like theirs last longer by washing and drying them on delicate mode. Fake download buttons. I think everyone knows this is a scam. I still hate it when I end up on a download page and there's like 50 different buttons that say download. Cars are getting harder and harder to self-repair so someone else can get paid to fix the issue. Also, electronics that have screws that the average person doesn't have the tool to open it to try and repair it themselves. The pandemic has really highlighted why right to repair should be an obvious choice in law. Now we can't repair things vital to keeping the supply chain going because they had to be made special and intentionally impossible to repair at home. It is also a huge burden on the poorest and most vulnerable sections of the population. Selling a pint of beer that really just contains 14 ounces instead of 16, US size. That's not even mentioning false pints that have a thicker glass bottom. Social media influencer who get away with endorsing horrible products. Try the RAYCONE25S. They only make your ears bleed a little. Foam. So many cleaning products contain ingredients only to increase the amount of foam. People think foam means a better product. Your toothpaste doesn't need a foaming agent. Your dishwashing liquid doesn't either. We've been trained by marketing experts to believe in the power of foam, but a large part of it is a big lie. Okay, but consider. It's more fun. College bookstores. They are the worst. Edit. I'll keep the original wording, but I feel compelled to say our collective outrage is more accurately directed at publishing companies. Thank you, kind commenters. Library Genesis saved me thousands in college. Time. Advertising is effing everywhere. It takes up your thoughts. It's placed in your face. Every site has a pop-up. It's flashy, planned, manipulation. It's to the point where the available advertising space has been so crammed your attention is being bought and sold in the markets. It's time to start charging. We'll be forced to wear blockout glasses and earphones just so we can filter what we're exposed to. In the year 2525. Printer ink. Butuming you need a home printer, save up and get a laser printer. You'll wonder why you ever dealt with the BS of inkjet printers. Asterisk gestures vaguely at everything asterisk. Those things you wrap around your waist that claim to burn belly fat. It has been debunked for decades, but people still buy them. Yep. Yeah, it's a waste of money. Manufactured obsolescence and the right to repair. I thought you said manufactured adolescence and I was excited to see how to repair mine. Edit, thanks for all the awards, but they're really not necessary. I had a pretty good childhood and adolescence. Nothing that caused any lasting psychological damage at least. Food sensitivity tests, this is a GIGO problem dressed up to look like medical testing, they take a sample, send it off to a lab, and return official looking results. The problem is asterisk they run tests for the wrong antibody asterisk so the results tell you f, all about food allergies, food intolerances, or food sensitivity. Real food allergies involve a malfunction of the immune system antibody IgE. Garbage food sensitivity tests check for asterisk IgG asterisk. 
you can walk into a local chiropractor's office or a naturopath's office where they'll gladly do a blood draw, send the sample off to a lab, and then proceed to diagnose you with food problems you don't have. Then once you pay for the testing you can pay them more for this end that to cure you of problems you don't have. Or you can cut out the middleman and mail order these garbage tests from the manufacturer directly. The problem here is many-sided, in addition to being a pretty little way to separate fools from their money, consumers who trust these test results can end up with nutritional deficiencies while they eliminate nutritious foods from their diet because they're misled into thinking those foods are harmful. Meanwhile if the person does have medical issues, such as real allergies, the genuine problem goes undiagnosed and the unfortunate marks still end up in the earth, not knowing why. The FTC probably ought to crack down on bogus food sensitivity testing. But so far it hasn't. So it's pretty easy to get suckered if you aren't wise to the scam. References. Link. 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 Dash 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 dash. Asterisk edit asterisk. GIGO is a programming acronym that stands for garbage in, garbage out, bad input creates garbage results. IgE and IgG are both types of immune system antibodies, immunoglobulin E and immunoglobulin G, IgG measurements can be quite useful in COVID-19 testing, link. Asterisk edit number two asterisk. Food intolerance isn't a specific diagnosis. It's a catch-all term that can cover a variety of unrelated conditions such as FODMAPS intolerance, link. Lactose intolerance should not be confused with milk allergy, link. If you do want allergy testing, here's a reliable rundown, link. Needing experience for an entry-level position. Like needing credit to get credit. Having to calculate your taxes unless you have things you can actually claim and write off. They already know what you should pay or get back. This goes for the USA's IRS and Canada's CRA. Likely other countries too, but those for sure. Professional, fraternities at university. You've been invited to join Kappa Kappa Delta because of your outstanding GPA. A prestigious organization that looks great on your resume. Please pay us $100 to be a member. Edit. Maybe I am more talking about honors societies. I don't really know what to call them. Religion for profit. MLMs. Mums losing money. Credit scores. Political duopoly in the United States. Diamonds. Thank you for watching. We upload new videos every day, so be sure to come back for more fun. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video.